Welcome to Cambridge House Live. I'm Bridget Anderson and I'm joined by Greg McCoach, who is uh, right with the mining speculator and president of Amerigold. Nice to see you again, Greg. Oh, glad to, glad to be here always. Let's start off. You've, you've got some more extreme views than others. So I want to start off there and talk about what you're seeing as a bit of a doomsday scenario. So an impending financial collapse. Talk to me about some of the evidence you see for that. Yeah, I mean, the, the unsustainable position of the U.S. government that's creating what they admit is $85 billion a month through the Federal Reserve, pumping it into the system, that's, that's the biggest Ponzi scheme we've ever seen. It makes Bernie Madoff look like a Sunday school child, right? <laughs> um, it, there's no way that's sustainable. And every time they talk about a taper, it's all just f flapping of the gums. So because you're not buying into this recent no, taper? No, no, they're already talking about QE5, right? Just two weeks after they talk about a taper, and the taper is a minimum. It's such a minimal amount, okay? All I believe that is is just flapping of the jaws to try to get a reaction in the market. All this quantitative easing has been very negative for the dollar. It's why I believe they have to manipulate against physical gold and silver prices to offset the negative effects of all this quantitative easing. There's no stop to it. They can't stop. And taper is just a, it's a term they use just to kind of diffuse things for the short term. In the big, in the longer picture, it's got to be QE to infinity, and QE5 is coming, I believe, very soon. Well, what do you see happening with the U.S. economy then? You know, you look at some of the indicators, and they are starting to, to get a bit more positive, and so some would say that there is, you know, real recovery there. Oh. Do you see that? No, I don't see that. I think that's all smoke and mirrors. The, the data that's coming out of the U.S. government, in my opinion, is fraudulent. They, they skew things, it's disinformation to keep the masses in a dumbed down state to not understand what's happening. Uh, you know, there, there's just, it's scripted news that's positioned to keep the public from understanding really what's happening. So then how does an investor approach this kind of information? How do they factor that in when they're making their investment decisions? It's terribly difficult, you know? The rug can get pulled out from under you at any moment, all right? The shrewdest people I know uh, I, I, we, we talk, I sit down with them, I, I, uh, we, we try to compare notes on these issues, and it is, it is a very troublesome environment. Keeping money in a bank is troublesome because they've already talked about bail-ins, where if banks get in trouble, they're going to come take depositors' money. You've got banks in the U.S., they're, they're, they're talking about charging interest for depositors' money. Uh, they're talking about confiscating retirement accounts, for crying out loud. I mean, if that isn't the essence of desperate times and, and, and that the rug can be pulled out from under you at any point. You've worked your whole life, right? You've tried to save, you've tried to do this, you've tried to do that. It could all go the wrong way. Yet investors here in Vancouver uh, at the show are, they're seeing a, t a mood has been, uh, a, a bit of a change in mood, I would say. Oh. Well, I mean, we've been brutalized in this mm -hmm. industry, right? I've been doing this, I've been writing my newsletter for 14 years. So we've had ups and downs. I expect corrections, but this was beyond what I expected. This was a this is a meltdown of epic proportions, right? Um, we've had our heads handed to us, but at the show here, this is great. This is good to see that the value investors are starting to come into the aisles. They're looking for value. I think that's, that's a sign that we've bottomed. Not that we're gonna take off anytime soon, but it's a, at least a good sign that you know, our market always goes in cycles. Well, do you think there's more consolidation to come in this space? Yeah. Absolutely. I, there's a lot of these juniors that have held on by their fingernails that don't offer any value. So to, to create value, I think there, there's a lot of these companies like this that need to combine to try to group their, their resources and talent or assets that they do have to create, try to create something of value that investors would be interested in. There's a lot of companies that are just hanging on and they just need to go the way of the dodo or combine for a, a better value. Okay, so let's talk about metals for a bit. You previously said that you thought gold was going to 10,000 an ounce. Oh, absolutely. In the you, long term, I believe that. You still believe that? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm not, it'll go higher than that. I'm being conservative when I say that. Mm -hmm. But that could be years away, okay? We don't know what we're going to have to go to go through before that. And that could be five years away still. But what I'm saying is that it's, it's in my view, it's almost unavoidable because the situation as it stands worldwide with all these devaluing fiat currencies, it's all going to implode. When it implodes, gold and silver are going to be viewed as the ultimate form of money, and it will drive those metals to these levels that people can't even understand now. But in the interim, 
you know, people criticize me for saying gold's going to 10,000. Well, in the short term, gold could still go down another 10%. I'm fully aware of that. Right. Okay? But I'm not worried about it because I know in the bigger picture, in the longer term, and it could happen at any moment or it could still be five years away, once the system implodes, gold and silver are going to these higher levels. Well, and how much is it tied to global demand as well? Well, global demand is based on what's going on. If, as, long as, as long as it looks to the general public that everything's okay, things can keep going the way they're going for an indefinite period of time. Sooner or later, though, there's going to be something. I don't know what it's going to be. It's going to be some straw that finally breaks the camel's back, where all this shrewd, clever way of you know, manipulating things, or, or uh, manipulating is a bad word. I don't like to use manipulation. They've been very clever at using duct tape and bailing wire to hold the shenanig whole shenanigan together. And you think time is coming to an end for that? Yes, it, it, yeah. it has to. There, there's no sustainability to it. And when it does, that's when gold and silver will shine. And any of these mining companies that are real, that have real value, they'll, they'll, they'll do incredibly well. So what should these mining companies be doing now? Should they be spending their, their money looking at uh, exploration opportunities? Well, it's, it's different in every area. Now, yeah. for some companies, I think, no, you, a junior mining company, just watch your expenses, hold on to your money, don't do anything significant until the market starts to make a real recovery where generating positive news can have an effect on your stock. Until that happens, most of these juniors should just stay put right now. Other companies who have real value, who, who do have an agenda that could be moved forward, where they could get value, yeah, they, they should do certain things. But it's a case-for-case -case basis, and right. you have to be so select about who you're willing to invest your monies in right now and the regions of the world where you are willing to invest because it's becoming more and more problematic. The challenges in this industry are huge. And I want to ask you about a particular region because you are, are telling investors, hey, it might be time to think outside of the box. And you're thinking way outside yeah. of the box. I'm the first, I think, to, to say this, but I do believe that Iraq, of all places, some people call me crazy, and I, I admit, you know, I'll take a lot of criticism for it. Um, but I'm okay with it. I, I just think uh, there's... Why Iraq? Because it's still so unstable. Yeah, it is unstable, but I think there's massive amounts of money in the last couple of years from Western banks, from Western entities, from Europe, that have, they're putting big money into Iraq. Uh, Hillary Clinton, I don't usually like to quote Hillary Clinton. She's not one of my favorite people politically, but... Um, she's on record as saying that she believes Iraq is, is going to be an economic boom, uh, an unprecedented economic boom. And why is that? Because of the natural resources that it has or the location? Well, compared? because the government has been restructured. Uh, it's, they're, they're trying to go more to a democracy-based system. They're abundantly blessed with oil, we know, but a lot of people don't know that there's a, been a big gold discovery over there recently just in the outskirts of Baghdad. It's one of the biggest gold discoveries in the world. And it's it's so economic, it's right near the surface. There's no mountains, there's but no... severe hurdles to get oh, to that gold. absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I'm not saying to put all your money into something like that. I'm just <laughs> right. saying it may be a region of the world that might, and this might be the first time to really just take a look at that because what I'm seeing is Western, Western companies with Western technology are going in there to develop oil and gas deposits. Now that gold's part of the equation, how much longer is it before some Western groups go in there? Man, I'd want to be part of that equation because this is low-hanging fruit. In other words, because good high-tech uh, you know, technologies haven't never been used in this area before. So it's, it's an abundantly blessed area of resources, and now we know that gold's part of the equation of Iraq, and Iraq I think is the stepping stone. If Iraq works, it could be it could open the Middle East, you know, Afghanistan. Afghanistan has eight hundred and twelve billion dollars worth of resource in situ value. All right? Again, a lot of instability. So this isn't oh, yeah. something you're saying in the short term. No, no, but how how difficult is it now for us to go look in all the good places of the world where we've been looking, we're not finding much. We've spent a lot of money in South America, Central America, North America, and all the low-hanging fruit's gone. So do you have an idea of a time frame then? Well, I think Iraq, I think, is, is in play this year to become a more stable environment because it looks like their currency is going to revalue. 
If the currency revalues, they're back in the game as a worldwide global partner. And all this money that's been invested there, all these big banks and all these big investors aren't doing this for no reason. They want to see a return. So I think just the fact that the, the shrewdest banks in the world have put so much money in here tells you that something's about to happen. And if I'm correct, I think precious metals could be a, a part of this equation that early investors would want to get in on the ground floor. I'm not saying it's where you want to put all your money. I'm still willing to invest in Mexico and Canada and Nevada and other places I've had success. What I'm saying is that those areas are becoming more and more troublesome because of the outrageous permitting times. Uh, the fact that it, there's very few outcrop left that's, that, you know, where a discovery's been made. I mean, we're drilling blind on a lot of areas, looking into the earth, hoping that there's something there. You've done a little bit of the research into Iraq, then I don't want to put you too much on the spot, but how much does the government need to do to enable this kind of investment? Or are they a, a big part of the way there already? Well, no, it's, it's it, it, what's troubling, it, the Middle East is so corrupt, right? Yeah. And you have these competing groups of people just within Iraq who never seen for thousands of years, can't seem to get along. And it's ridiculous because if they would just come together somewhat, I think that the, the economic boom to the citizens would be so incredible. These would be some of the richest people on the planet because of all their resources, right? And that once that happens, that other countries in that area would be jealous and want to be part of that. So they may go along with it, right? And they may allow these Western companies to come in and help them develop these resources. So I, I, just, I just think, you know, thinking outside the box, this term comes from that little brain teaser with the eight little dots, <laughs> and you, the, the, they say, you know, uh, with four lines, not leave, having your pencil leave right. the paper, go through all the dots. Well, most people don't think out of the box, and they stay within the box, and they can never get all of the, the dots with a line through well, it. Well, and you may be connecting some dots for us, Greg. Well, who knows? <laughs> Thanks very much for your time. Good to be here.